All right, guys, what's going on? What's going on? Welcome in. So, Tyson, obviously, we haven't done a recorded show in a long time. We've been going live as of late. And we definitely, by the way, plan on going live more, especially uh, leading up to the, you know, start of the NFL draft, which is in late April. But, Tyson, what's going on, man? The Jets have made a lot of moves. There, there's been, I would say, quite a few storylines regarding the New York Jets since the last time we've done, you know, a show. But how's it going, man? I'm doing good, man. I miss talking to you. It's been a while. It's been like a week and a half or something like that. And thank you to everybody who keeps reaching out to us. Like, you guys do a show. When's your show? So we try to stay on a good schedule, but things come up in life, so things happen. But I think the big thing that we didn't cover was the Hassan Reddick trade, which was actually a player we talked about a couple weeks ago that a guy we both like, but will he become available? Will the, will the Eagles actually release him? And that came out of nowhere, man. That was just wild. Yeah, so – I kind of figured that like Reddick was going to be on the way. I mean, we we were talking about it on one of the podcasts, like, yep. oh, you know, could Reddick be a guy, which is crazy. But uh, yeah, because, you know, you look at the Eagles moves, they obviously brought in Bryce Huff and whatnot. And it's a win now football team. They do have, you know, quite a few pass rushers. But yeah, dude, Reddick lands with the Jets, a 2020, uh, 2026 conditional third round pick. Yep. That's freaking sweet, man. I, I don't know about you, but to me, that's an A plus move. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a win-now move for a win-now team. I mean, the Jets lost Huff. You need a pass rusher. I mean, I'm curious to see if they give an extension, any kind of new contract. They add a year to it or something like that. But, I mean, it's a, it's a quality move. Now, I know the argument was, like, I'd rather keep Huff than, you know, than get Reddick. Well, the Jets didn't keep Huff, so you had a pivot. This was their pivot move. And I, I've always liked Reddick, dude. I think he's a good player, well-rounded, tenacious, an asset to the team, an excellent mentor for Jermaine Johnson. I mean, it, it's it just fits right now where they're at as a team. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Joe Douglas, for the most part, is, is like a lot of Band-Aid moves, right? It's like a lot of one-year deals, one-year deals. But the one-year deals are coming at the right compensation in terms of either draft compensation or the value. And it's like you're not locked in long-term. Like, there's, there's not been that big five-year contract where you're like, oh, man, I hope this works out. It's all like one-year deal. I mean, next year we're going to be in the same conversations, but he, he's, he's giving the, the, the team a chance to win at least. Yeah, dude, for sure. And, you know, going back to Reddick, four straight years with double-digit sacks, yeah. three different teams, two, Eagles, Carolina, and Arizona. I mean, I think – I mean, I, I've seen – you know, de I, I've definitely seen the strange – or the, the questions about the strange move, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't Joe Douglas just pay the younger, homegrown, yeah. you know, undrafted free agent, who, Bryce Huff, who spent so much time with the team, obviously – you know, who's had success within the solid defense coming off the great season, just pay the younger guy. But like you said, dude, the reality was he left, yep. you know, whether it was the Jets didn't want him back, whether it was the Jets didn't want him back for a specific price, whether Huff was just like, screw you guys, I'm out. Uh, or if it was a different, you know, situation, the bottom line was, you know, he's off the team. So what's the next best option? And yep. also too, man, like, there was uh, rumors about Shaq Barrett, Jadavian Clowney. I would much rather, much rather trade a future third round pick for Reddick as opposed to overpay and give Clowney like 12 mil, you know, a season or something like that. So I'm totally thrilled with the move. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely fine with this. I have no problem. I like the player. I like the fit. I like the compensation. Like you said, you know, and the other thing with Huff, too, is he may not have wanted to stay here. I think he wants to play 65% of the snaps. He wants a much higher snap count where he, and he's not going to get that here. And he knows it. And that's something he's referenced. Like, you know what? I want my chance to show what I can do. I'm not getting it doing 42% of the time or whatever his number was. So as much as I think the Jets screwed the pooch, they could have got him done a year ago. But I think at a certain point, he's like, you know what? I'm growing. I'm developing. You're kind of holding me back now. I want to go blossom and show what I can really do. I can't do that here. So if you didn't want to pay me a year ago, I have my chance to go test the market. And the Eagles probably said, you know what? You saw how much Reddick played. Reddick played a lot, man. Like, you know what? We're going we're gonna to let you flourish. You know, go for it. And that was music to his ears. So I don't have any problem with that. I think it's a quality move and, and you move on. Like, I'm not angry about it. I mean, I was disappointed with Huff, but like, it's a quality. Like, if you look at the Jets defense this year, they could actually be better than last year. Like, I like, yeah. you know, hope, assuming Chuck Clark comes back healthy and is a quality player, they could actually be better than last year. Well, also, too, to, you know, kind of piggyback off that point. The uh, if the offense can actually score some points, if they can hold on to the ball, they're not going three and out, three and out, yeah. turnover, three and out, turnover, three and like, I mean, it was unbelievable, right? We couldn't even like, I, I mean, how many like long 10, 12, 14 play drives did the Jets go on last year? Like giving the defense a break, giving them, you know, some rest on the sidelines. Like that was just hard. That was just, just wasn't even ha like happening. I felt like every single week, 
we were luck, lucky to get maybe like one eight plus yard drive, yeah. and that was pretty much it. Um, so I think with the offense scoring, I would assume 20 plus points a, a week. Uh, that should in turn benefit the defense, right? Give those guys some 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 breathing room on the sidelines. And also takes a lot of pressure off Will McDonald as well, if you're being honest, because you're looking at, if you didn't have Reddick here, everybody's like, Will McDonald better get 10 sacks. He better get 12 sacks. He better take that big step that Jermaine Johnson did. Now he can take that big step, but it's not like he has to. I mean, he can, but it's not like we're focusing on him week in and week out. We're focusing on Reddick. Like, Reddick better do his job. So McDonald has another year to keep growing, become a better player. Reddick is here. So I, I like it, man. I, I'm, I'm To me, it's all about the offense now. Like, find pieces to the puzzle. I think the other story was Justin Hardy, who's a team captain, a valuable guy in special teams, very respected in the locker room, goes to the Browns. And this one surprised me a little bit. I know Jet fans get mad at him for the dumb penalties, which we saw a lot of movies here, but still a very good player. Are you among the thinking where it's like, you know what, Irv Charles is coming on, he's a good player. The Jets have some real hungry young players that are, you know can kind of fill his role. Are you kind of with him on, on special teams? Yeah, I mean, I think it was one of those moves where the coaches – are probably looking at it saying like, man, this sucks. We want to have you back, but we just have too many holes to fill, right? With Tyron Smith, Mike Williams, you know, bringing in Reddick, all these different guys, uh, you know, Foto, Kinlaw, all you know, all these different free agent acquisitions, and still having to have money for the draft as well. You know, it's um, it just kind of felt like he was, I guess, the odd man out, which sucks because Hardy did not deserve to be the odd man out. Like his play. It might like he's one of the better special teamers yeah. in football, but yeah, like you said, dude, Irv Charles, I'm really liking what we're seeing from him as like that gunner, especially on punt returns and whatnot. Like he, I, I think, hopefully, maybe took some stuff from Hardy yeah. and applied it to his game, and you know. But I guess I guess the one thing that you can't really re uh, replace is Hardy's leadership, yeah, uh, as well as like the playoff experience with New Orleans, seeing a lot of winning football. We just don't have that anymore. Um, and I have seen, you know, the argument of, well, the special or the kickoff rule has changed. Yep. So maybe that devalued Hardy. But my pushback would be, well, he's important enough for Cleveland, a win now football team to go out and sign him, you yep. know, make him a priority before the draft. So, you know, I guess it could go both, you know, either way. Yeah, it was an interesting move. I think when they saw Hardy get hurt last year and when then they, they saw other guys pick up their, their game. Also, I think they have a lot of faith in Brant Boyer as a coach too. We're like, you know what? Year in and year out, Jet special teams are pretty consistent. He'll find pieces of the puzzle. We'll have faith in him. You know, kind of save some money here because we have to spend money elsewhere. So I'm not going to, you know, be pissed off about it. I'm a little surprised Ashton Davis isn't back already. I'm not sure what his story is. I, I To me, it was a foregone conclusion he's coming back. So maybe that happens after the draft. That maybe the Jets see how their draft goes. But a little bit surprising right now that he's not signed anywhere. Are, are you, is, that, is that curious to you at all? I, I mean, he kind of. Yeah, I'm with you. I like I think he's definitely going to be back at some point. But the thing is, it's like there's so many good safeties out there. Still out there yeah, I remember the last time uh, we did yeah. a podcast, we were talking about all the good safeties. It's yep. pretty much the same exact list. True. Right. Uh Justin Simmons. I mean, he's one of the league's best safeties. He's just out on the open market. Micah Hyde is still out there. Um, like th there's there's some qu quandary digs, you know. Th there's a lot of quality true, out there. True. I feel like we're gonna see maybe a couple guys sign post draft um and then ashton davis will probably be that like may june type of signing for a cheap one-year deal um Fair. but I, I don't know i haven't heard any rumors any okay. rumblings about it so you know i i don't know because the hardy thing there were there were no rumor that was kind of like a foregone conclusion that he was going to be back with the jets yep. all of a sudden he's like signing with cleveland like out of the blue so um yeah man i i i i, I think at this point i want davis back but I would prefer, obviously, a Quandre Diggs. But I think, realistically speaking, it'll probably be Ashton. Yeah, especially for the money. I think those guys that you mentioned, like the high-profile guys, the Pro Bowl guys, are all going to want decent-sized money. The Jets are going to be like, you know, we're going to bank on Clark coming back healthy and playing well. They love Tony Adams. Davis should come back at a, a, probably a quarter of what these other guys are getting paid. The only other position that was kind of interesting to me is running back, where I'm kind of hell-bent where I want a veteran backup running back behind Brees Hall. And slowly but surely, the running back market where guys are coming off the list. You're like, oh, man, like I love Cordell Patterson, especially with the kickoff rule. I'm like, Patterson, when a guy I love, he yeah. went to the Steelers. You saw these guys. There's still some out there, you know, but it's like, man, I hope – I don't think – like I don't want to draft the running back. I'd, I'd like to get a veteran guy here. If you have faith in Izzy, but like what do you think about the running back position right now? Yeah, dude, no, I'm with you. I think uh, 
I want a veteran, right? Ideally, somebody who can kind of play off of Brees Hall, yep. right? Somebody who provides a different skill set, like just a bruising running back, goal yep. line situations, third and fourth and uh, or third and shorts, fourth and shorts, yep. uh, somebody like that. Because I feel like Izzy and Brees, it's like two thirds of the pie, and of course Hall is going to be, you know, the bell cow running back. But for me, you know, ideally. Well, I, I mean, first of all, you take a look at every you know every other NFL team out there who's running out two running backs per week. Like it just doesn't happen. We're going to add somebody at least to the room. Yep. Um, but I don't really want another young running back into the you know into the fold. I was thinking Zeke Elliott makes a lot of sense because yep. he has again playoff experience. Um, he provide he he is that bruising back. He could take pressure off of Brees Hall if you need him to you know start a week if Brees is banged up for whatever reason, and you need Zeke to start you know a week or two. He can go out and do that. Plus, you look at the uh, the pass protection yep. that Elliott brings to the tables, which in my opinion is better than Izzy and Hall. So you know if you're talking about keeping Aaron Rodgers upright, then maybe Zeke Elliott. There's a lot of different ways that you can use him. I, I really felt like. Um, you know, that can make a lot of sense. But I, I think the latest with Zeke is like there's some Cowboys rumors. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's so. the thing, too. That's the most important thing is, is is blitz pickup and pass protection. That is paramount with Aaron Rodgers back there. You don't want Izzy whiffing on blocks and all those other different things. You want yeah. a guy that has been there, done that short yardage, or a guy that can just spell Brees Hall and you're not worried about fumbles. You want like a reliable, consistent player. Now, the one guy that, you know, I keep, I keep getting messages about is J.K. Dobbins because Aaron Rodgers was rehabbing with him, they're friends, all kinds of talent. Coming off in the ACL, similar to friggin' Mike Williams, like the player. But I mean, is that the right fit? Like, you want to take another chance on you want to take a chance on a guy like that, or do you want to take a chance on a guy that's already healthy? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think you know, going back a month, the number one choice for me was AJ Dillon. Yeah. But now, probably, like, honestly, not just saying because he's still out there, but Zeke Elliott's probably my second choice. Yeah. Now my first choice with with Dylan, you know, gone. So. For me, I definitely think it's a position that needs to be addressed. Yeah, 100%. Now, the interesting thing with the draft, because we're only a couple weeks away, is the Jets' strategy. Because they're basically a win-now team. We just talked about the moves they're making. A lot of one-year deals, a lot of Band-Aids. They're really going for it. They're all in. So do you draft that way? Do you draft like, we need instant impact players this year? Or are you drafting with an eye towards the future? That's the question I have. Because, dude, you can make an argument both ways. Like, And I think we're, we'll probably argue a little bit about this because I kind of – I'm I'm really to sell my soul. I'm selling my soul because I think we have two years of Aaron Rodgers, and then we and we only have one year, and then we're going to be in a complete mess next year. So if that's the case, I want to have the most impact players as possible, as fast as possible. But what is your mindset going into this draft, dude? Oh, man, I, I think for me, I'm kind of under the impression that no matter who the Jets pick, probably unless it's another defensive end, we're going to be a better football team, right? If we want to go out and draft whoever it is, Brian Thomas, wide receiver from LSU, we want to draft Odunze, he falls, mm -hmm. Bowers, tight end, uh, Fashionu, Penn State, depth piece tackle, backup yeah. left tackle, future left tackle, um, you know, whoever, Amarius Mims, J.C. Latham, like Fuaga, no matter who the Jets draft, I think I, I think it's, it, it's just going to be a win. I'm, I, I think this draft is – it's really cool because it's deep in the positions that we really need, right? right? It's not like we're all shooting for, you know, I guess everybody is kind of shooting for Joe Alt that needs to tackle. But at the same time, it's not like, oh, he's the only guy. That's the only guy being considered going in the first round. Right. So for me, if the Jets walk away with, again, Fuaga, Latham, Thomas, Bowers, I'm going to I'm gonna be pumped up because I yeah, think but, he's but, but I'm sorry, I mean, but I, I get what you're saying. I completely agree with you. But – is Joe Douglas like? Is he drafting? Assuming he's going to be here three years from now or two years from now, like that's kind of the thing. Because it's like, if you have, say, if you draft an offensive lineman, chances are if the team is healthy going into training camp, this guy's a backup. Does he have the Does he have the luxury to do that? As the general manager saying, you know what, we know the kid's not ready to play now. He'll be ready to play later this year and next year. Does he have the luxury to do that as a guy in the hot seat? I think with offensive line, he does because the reality is Tyron Smith gets her every single season. That's true. He hasn't played a full season since 2015. He's dealt with neck injuries, back injuries. True. I think he dealt with a hamstring. 
uh, as well. You know, Tyron, and plus he's 33, 32, 33. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if Tyron Smith, you know, I, I know on paper he's the starter, but if he goes down week one, if he goes down week four, we're screwed. We're, we're looking at left tackle at saying, all right, well, yeah. you know, are we going to just have a repeat of, of last year where the Jets just throw their hands up and don't do anything? Uh, and then, you know, with Morgan Moses on the right side, you know, he's up there in age. He is on a one year contract. He dealt with injury last year. Yep. So, you know, in my opinion, I don't really think it's like the, you know, I, I know you have the, the the two definitions of the two paths, right? The short term incident impact or the long term play. But when I'm thinking specifically about the offensive line, I think it really checks both boxes because yes. you're you, you need depth in the short term. And they would come in and fill that. So, no, I agree with you. I completely agree. It's almost like signing like a quality insurance program, like or, or insurance policy. Because it's like you just said it. Morgan Moses coming off a of pec surgery. Tyron Smith always hurt. So, and the thing is, if you draft a guy at ten, which we're going to go through it, but if you draft a guy, he'd be like, you know, what, listen, he may be not ready to start day one, but guess what? We may need him by week five. And instead of worrying about, you know, I would still sign Bakhtiari, but instead of signing all these other guys off the street. We're drafting a young kid with a ton of talent that's healthy that we can kind of mold into what we want, and he's not forced to play week one. So I can see that too. Um, and, I, and I mean, you know, it, we're, we're, yeah, real quick, another thing too. AVT's coming off a season ender. That's true. You know, so that, that's just another reason. offensive lineman that we have to not just run into the ground, in my opinion. Yeah. We have to have a smarter – because I don't think it's a coincidence that every single year we have tons of injuries on the offensive line. Yeah. We, we always have injuries at tons of different positions, but I feel like it's either – I mean, there has to be some sort of underlying thing. I don't know if it's the practice style. I don't know if it's whatever the field or whatever the case is. Yep. I just – you know, this doesn't really happen to the same NFL team over and over and over and over and over again. And it's just like nauseating at this point. Like I'm just holding – like training camp is supposed to be fun and exciting, but like every year I find myself just – you know, holding my breath. Oh, hopefully everybody is, you know, safe after each practice. Nobody got hurt. Nobody pulled anything. Um, and you know, last year they're they're moving guys around like literally day that. by yep. day. Like Beckton's yep. on the left side, Beckton Beckton's on the right side. Yep. They were doing that with Titman and McGovern on the inside. And it's just like, man, I I just want to keep everybody in in the same positions. Yep. Monitor them. Put health at the number one. You know make that the the focal point yep. of the in my opinion the offseason training really the entire program yep. right because it's not like tyron smith needs a ton of preseason snaps to get ready for yep. the year you know what i mean avt has shown enough at this you know to this point morgan moses i think is going to be fine john simpson i think i would just kind of treat that situation normally same with joe Tipman, but yep. um yeah i i mean to kind of go back to the draft whether it's you know fashion new mims whoever whoever maybe trade down and go with another tackle i think i would be totally totally fine with it honestly that's kind of the direction i'm leaning in offensive line first yeah and we can we can go it we can do like your own little your personal mock draft here and go through the top 10 picks and see how it plays out I, i'm really the offensive line to me is just going to be the biggest concern no matter who they sign and what they do because my goal your goal as a team is the last week of training camp, they're all practicing together, playing together. So week one, you're not learning who each other are. And that's been a just yeah. problem for the last couple of years where the left tackle hasn't been practicing. This guy's been practicing. You're changing your offense. You're changing your coach. They don't know what the hell is going on. Like, like I kind of want to eliminate all the excuses for failure. You know what I mean? Like, they all practice together. They're all healthy. The under Aaron Rodgers is there. Hackett's calling plays. Like, they all know what's going on. So you don't seem blown assignments and Aaron Rodgers getting drilled. Because we can't afford it. Like, you got to start off fast. Like, this is a year where you want to win 10, 11, 12 games. You can't afford to start out slow and be, you know, two and three, three and four. Like, you got to, you know, make a run and kick it off fast. So, um, with the draft, we can do it, man. I'm, I'm, you're like the guru, man. I'm like the guy that asks questions. You're the, you're the draft guru. You know the college, their background, all the stats. So, we can do a quick, you know, top 10 picks. Because I'm curious, like, with all the mock drafts out there, you see, like, well, if this guy falls, well, let's see who falls. Because then – the Jets could be in a spot where it's like their third best offensive lineman is there as opposed to their number two receiver. Who do you pick then? You know what I mean? Like that's based on what their rankings are. What's your biggest priority? So I have my, I have my little list here. Are you ready to, to show off your draft skills here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, I'm trying to think, let me uh, grab a pen. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to just write it down as we go. Come on. I'm going to hold you accountable. 
Let's do it, man. Let's do it. All right. So first up, no, no, uh, Chicago Bears here. Yeah, Caleb Williams. I think we could probably just go straight to number two here with Washington. Yep. Um, who are you kind of leaning towards? And my 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 bad. I'm looking down. I'm writing this all out. We're writing it all well, out. Well, you got to go it, now. You got to think they need a quarterback, right? That's where they're going. I mean, they had. I yeah. mean, they didn't really have much of a choice. They need a franchise guy to build their team around. But then it's just a matter of what's your what's your flavor? Like, what what player do you think could carry them? Especially with a team like that that has so it's been just dysfunctional on another level for so long. New owner. I mean, what do you think? You go with a Jaden Daniels? Like, what do you do there? I think I would go with Daniels, bro. Honestly, I think Daniels gives you just so many. And it's not to say that Drake May doesn't, but in my opinion, I think Daniels maybe makes a little bit more sense for Washington. I mean, he's accurate. He has arm strength. He has height. He has mobility. Players hated playing against him. Players loved playing with him. Yep. Coaches loved him. Super, super quick release. He has deep ball accuracy. Yep. I think um, – He's a really quick decision maker too, which yeah. you know in the Kingsbury offense, like you got to get the football out. 100%. Um, so I think Jaden Daniels will be the pick here too. Yeah, I could see that too. So you get Williams, Daniels. The Patriots are interesting because you know we'll get your we'll get your thoughts. But everybody's like, oh, JJ McCarthy is made for the Patriots because that's the way he is. Northeast, bad weather, smart kid, all that. Belichick's gone. This could be a new way of doing business with the Patriots. We have no idea what they could be thinking there. So where would you go with the Patriots? Dude, I would try to trade down if I'm New England. Uh, and it's not just so me as a Jet fan. I don't want them to get a quarterback. But, right. bro, when I'm looking at New England's roster, it's a bottom three in football. Yeah. Like, let me ask you, do you know who their starting left tackle is? <sighs> they lost. You know him. You know, you know him, but you might not. <laughs> uh, not let, let Con- me just. Connor McDermott? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yep, right. Connor McDermott. So. You know, that's just one position, you know, talk about wide receiver. Like, yeah, oh, they need help. It's, it's just like desolate, right? Um, they Ramondre Stevenson is is solid. I really like him. And they brought back Michael Nguyenu. But man, like th- this is just an offense that just doesn't have any speed, any explosion. I think if you draft a rookie quarterback and the expectation is to play him at all this year, it, it's just like a recipe for failure. Yeah, in my opinion, unless it's a long term plan and you roll Brissett out there all year and you hope he doesn't get hurt, and you know, then you you factor in another free agency class and another draft class, then you let the rookie quarterback take over. I I, I understand that philosophy. I just don't know if New England. I don't know. It, it, it's tough. I think if I'm the Patriots and Drake May is sitting here on the board, and you got teams calling a you know, want to come up here, I think I would probably tra- try to trade down. And I think Minnesota is probably the most likely team. Yeah, it's interesting because having Brissett there is like the perfect play, like the perfect like stopgap guy to have your young quarterback if you draft sit and watch. You're not, you don't have to play. Like you can sit and watch him play, learn the speed of the NFL, learn the offense. You know, there's no pressure to win 10 games this year in New England. It's a complete rebuild. So it's actually a good situation for a young kid to play. But your point is well said is like, you know what? You're bringing him in here, but what weapons are around him? Can you protect him? Who's he throwing a ball to? So it's not a great scenario for a young quarterback, but you can sit and watch behind Brissett. So if the, if the Patriots stay there, you're taking May? If they stay, I would take Drake May. Okay. We'll put three but if they though. don't, I think the Vikings – I think either way, May will be the third pick. Yeah, the Vikings desperately need somebody too. All right, so now you have the Arizona Cardinals who don't need a quarterback. So they, they're all about Kyler Murray, I would assume, at this point. He's making all that money. What are you doing with the Cardinals? Yeah, I'm not going to overthink it. I, th- I think it's Marvin Harrison. I, I think, think he's the so best true. receiver in the class. I think he could win constantly on the outside. I think that's what the Cardinals need. They lost Hollywood Brown. Go get Kyler Murray like a true number one wide receiver. They already have a good tight end on the middle of the field. Who, uh, I, I, th- I don't know about you, but I, I wanted the Jets to draft it, uh, Trey McBride yep. out of Colorado State. Yep. Yep. So they got him, and you know that they have that extra first-round pick in the back half. I think it's like 26, 27, somewhere around that range. Yep. Um, you know, so they can 27. Out, yep. Yeah. Target a corner target, you know, an edge rusher something like that later on, just go get the best wide receiver in the class. In my opinion, I got you. So now the chargers are interesting. You have Harbaugh out there. They lost Keenan Allen. They lost Mike Williams. They need all kinds of help for Justin Herbert. Are you going to go offensive line here? Or are you going to go give him a receiver that he desperately needs? I am. I think this is an, another interesting spot for a trade down. I think so too. I think so too. Um, but I think that teams realistically, you know, so if, if New England takes Drake May, I think 
Minnesota's coming to five. Okay. But if the Vikings move to three, who do the Chargers move back with? Are they really going to, you know, trade with their division rival Raiders or Broncos? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Unless this is like one big mental sabotage backwards reverse psychology thing with Harbaugh <laughs> hyping JJ McCarthy up and yep. he knows he's terrible or something like that. Yep. Trying to beat the Broncos or the division rival to come up and select yeah. them. Uh, but now nah, realistically, I think if the chargers are here and Drake Mays off the board, um, it, or sorry, if the Vikings, whatever, let's just go bears, Caleb, Washington, Jaden, Patriots, Drake may Arizona, Marvin mm-hmm. Harrison. Yep. I think it'll either be Vikings for McCarthy coming up. Okay. Or they stay and they go with neighbors. Oh, neighbors here. Really? Be, bro, like, in my opinion, you can't, if you have a guy like Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. like every tool in the, in the world, he's yep. already been so, so successful already. You can't say, all right, we're going to go trade Keenan Allen for a mid round pick. Yep. We're going to cut Mike Williams. So your two top receivers are gone. We're going to just let uh, Gerald Everett go and sign a multi-year deal with the Bears, even though he had a great season and you guys had instant chemistry. Like Herbert's probably looking around like, like let's, can I have some help, please? Like I don't want to, you know, be in a situation where, you know, we're relying so much on like Palmer and Quentin Johnson, who was their first rounder last year to like make, like like you got to compete with the Chiefs. You got to compete with Baltimore and Cincinnati. The Jets. Buffalo, the New York Jets, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't just – I don't – like, if I was a Charger fan, I don't want to be talking about lack of weapons in Week 10. That We, we can't beat the Chiefs because we don't have the firepower. So yeah. you have neighbors as your number two receiver in the draft? Yes. Okay. Yes. All I right. I like, I like – I think the same thing. I think they want an explosive, dynamic playmaker for Herbert. You have to when you get rid of his two best receivers. The New York Giants are interesting because it depends on what you think about Daniel Jones – coming off another injury, which is obviously concerning, but you can get out of his contract after this year. So do they go quarterback? They need receiver help. They need all kinds of help, to be honest with you. What do you do with the Giants? Yeah, I'm not taking a QB if I'm the Giants. It's just like – it's just a bad situation. Like, as much as I don't like Daniel Jones, I mean, I, I like him as – you know, I'm not rooting for him, but right. I don't I don't have anything against the guy. I just don't think he's a franchise quarterback, right? I just mm-hmm. disagree with the contract and everything. Um I, I I will say I don't think it's all on Daniel Jones. Like there's been holes in the offensive line. There's been injuries there. They have no talent at wide receiver. None. You this is like an offense last year with much like New England, no pop, not a lot of speed. Nope. They don't really provide like a lot of explosion offensively. And then they just go out and lose their most explosive offensive player in Saquon Barkley to the division rival Eagles. So, in my opinion, like, if the Giants draft a quarterback here, it just makes absolute, like, I think it's it's just the GM kind of, like, admitting, like, he doesn't really know, like, yeah. why give Daniel Jones a mega contract like that? Yep. Like, and granted, he's not, like, a top five highest paid QB, but, like, if you just gave him this deal, like, you don't hand out a deal like that if you're, like, wishy-washy, or you're, like, yep. eh, okay, like, I want my general manager to be handing out a four-year deal worth 100 plus million dollars to a quarterback if he is sold that he is his guy and he 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 did that right they didn't pay Barkley they decided to pay Daniel Jones and now all of a sudden oh we are you know the, the quarterback rumors and whatnot um in my opinion and, and also to another kind of facet that we have to throw in you know if the Giants win six games is Dable really going to be there Belichick will be there so you got a new head coach coming in, maybe even a new general manager coming in with a quarterback. Or sorry, with a big contract with Daniel Jones. Granted, they can get out of it. Yep. And then you have a rookie quarterback that the new regime did not draft in the top ten. Yep. I think, and also he doesn't impact the team this year. You know, so especially according to this board, McCarthy, like at spot number six, I, I just don't know. Like, is that even an? like a, that much of an upgrade in my like JJ nope. McCarthy over Daniel Jones. Like how big of a jump is that for me? I'm just going with the best receiver on the board. Okay. Who are you going? Personally, I like Brian Thomas, but realistically I think it'll probably, it'll probably end up being Odunze. That's what I think it's going to be as well. All right. So now you're at pick seven. 
the Jets are at 10, and no offensive linemen are taken. At this point, even though the Tennessee Titans need help, do you, if you're Joe Douglas, do you consider trying to trade up to get an offensive lineman here? Do you say, you know what? Alt's still out there. There's, you know, this is – the ball, the board's kind of falling to him. It, almost if you want your offensive lineman, it could be there. Are you considering trading up here at seven? I mean, I, at this point, if I'm the Jets, um, I would consider it, but I don't think I would do it. Um, okay. You know, like we were kind of talking about before, like this draft is so deep with offensive linemen. Like, all right, if we didn't sign Tyron Smith – yeah, I, I think the pressure would be on, but okay. because we have him, at, you know, healthy for now, I don't think that immediate pressure is there. You know, especially after trading away, you know, twenty twenty six third that could jump to a second for Reddick. I don't want to trade more capital, right? You know what I mean? And we don't have a second this year, so I mean, realistically, what are you going to give? Like it, yeah, it wouldn't take a future first. It'd probably take, you know, ten this year's third. Uh, maybe a future third as well, or a future second, yeah. I would assume. So I, I think it's just too much. So then if you're the Titans, you're going offensive line here? I'm guessing you yeah. probably are. Yeah, Joe Alt. Yeah, I think so too. That's where Alt goes. So the Falcons are interesting. You got Kirk Cousins. They are, you know, a high-flying team that they're looking, you know, a lot of new things going on down there. Where do you see them going here? Because they got, they got a lot of options here, to be honest with you. I think Atlanta needs to go with the best defensive player in the draft in their eyes. And they have the, you know, they have the opportunity to go out and select the best defensive player. Uh, realistically speaking, I think it'll probably be Dallas Turner because he fits the system really well. I think he'd come in and probably be the best edge rusher on the team. Yep. Uh, Raheem Morris is coming over from LA where he's had the luxury of seeing really, really good pass rush. He's had you know a good track record of developing pass rushers. They don't really need offensive skill pieces. You have cousins coming in. I think, you know, whenever you're in a position where you're drafting a player and you can say that player is the best player at his position on our football team, you're in a great position. Yep. Like, I agree. you know, for, for the Giants, neighbors, Odun, say whatever, Harrison, whoever they end up with, Brian Thomas, it's like, no matter who it is, they're going to say, okay, he's the best receiver on the football team. That's huge. So, yeah, I think Dallas Turner for the Falcons. All right, now you get the Bears, number nine. Yeah, so the Bears, there's a lot of – I keep seeing a lot of mock drafts with them going wide receiver, but I think they're going to go D-end. I'm going to go Jared Verse from Florida State. I think uh, – Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they trade for Keenan Allen. They have DJ Moore. They signed DeAndre Swift. They signed Gerald Everett. You know, they – there's only one football to go around. You know what I mean? Like these guys are all going to command a lot of targets and I know Allen gets hurt. Yep. Um, but geez, like, I, I mean, I guess they can, they can go Odunze for like, I wouldn't rule it out, but I think if you're a defensive head coach and Matt Eberflus, you've already signed all these different offensive pieces. You have Tremaine them into the middle of the field. Montez sweats, killing it on one side of the defensive line, Kevin Byard, they locked up Jalen Johnson at corner. If I'm Eberflus, I'm I'm saying to myself, like, dude, let's go get a perfect system fit in yeah. verse from Florida State, who's wrecked games at the college level, somebody who's going to take pressure off of Montez Sweat to make every single play, you know, with rushing the passer. Um, I, I think for me, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So now the New York Jets at 10. You're looking at a spot where Bowers is still there. Yeah, Fashanu there, who a lot of people love. So you have, you know. Offensive lineman of your choice, very much at this point. Wide receiver took a big shot. You have a lot of guys that are gone. Three wide receivers are gone at this point. Now, do you think a team would want a quarterback here that's like, you know what, somebody wants to come up? Is this same theory? Is there a team that wants where the Jets can say, you know what, we're in a position where we could trade back here? Is that a possibility? So based on the way this board just played out, you think the Jets could probably trade back or somebody's come up for a quarterback? I do. So I think there's probably three – three options th or three different like pathways, I guess. Right. Number one in this scenario where there's been no trades, I think the Broncos could say, we want to jump Minnesota yeah. at 11. Who wants a quarterback? So, yeah. Yep. Shoot up one spot. They get McCarthy and Minnesota screwed. Well, I guess they're, they're not screwed, but they're not know. getting their choice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're not getting McCarthy. Um, and who knows? I mean, I personally don't think like, you know, if I'm comparing Bo Nix to McCarthy, I don't know. I, I mean, like, is it really? I don't. Yeah. I, I really don't know if it's like that much of a difference. To be honest with you, 
but that's just my personal opinion. I Not saying I'm right here. That's just kind of my feeling. Um, but that's one, right? So Denver jumping Minnesota. Yep. You have the Raiders at 13 saying we want to jump our rival Broncos and the Vikings at 11, shoot up two spots yep. or I guess three spots, whatever to move three. up to 10. Yep. And that's an, that would be awesome too, you know, in my opinion. And then the last one is if the Patriots trade down uh, and say it was the Vikings who moved up for Drake May initially and the Patriots are sitting there at 11, mm -hmm. Denver can still want to jump New England okay. because New England can say, all right, well, we're still landing, you know, a top rookie quarterback in this class, but we recouped, you know, a future first. We scooped up. Yeah, uh, we got the 23rd pick or whatever it is, 24 yeah, yeah. from Minnesota. So we have two first round picks and we're still landing a quarterback. And I think Denver, I mean, the jump from 12 to 10 is a lot cheaper than going from 12 to five or 12 yep. to three. 100%. So that's kind of, those, that's kind of where, ahead. that's kind of where I'm like at this position right here. I think that's the first thing the Jets are probably thinking about. Like, all right. Cause like the offensive linemen are all still there at this point. And you do get trade back and just like, I kind of want to get a second round pick back, if, if if at all possible. But even if you can get more picks, go back. If we're talking about going back two spots, what, 12, 13, you know, like that's not a big fallback. And you're still going to get a top level guy, probably one of your top ranked guys anyway on offensive line. So it actually works out great for the Jets. If that actually happens. Yeah. And you got to think, too. I mean, if they move, let's just say it's Denver, yep. right? Denver, Denver's the team that moves up to 10. Yep. They're taking a quarterback. Yep. So. In essence, the Jets are only really missing out on one extra player. Yep. And the Vikings are, you know, they're okay at tackle. Yep. You know, they're okay at wide receiver. They're okay with, you know, Hawkinson at tight end. I mean, the chance you can go out and land Bauer Bowers at 12. Yep. Or, you know, Fashionu or Latham or whoever it is at 12, you know. Um, the Raiders, too. I, I mean, it, it's kind of like take your pick. Like Fuaga, I think, will be there. So now say the Jets. They try to get trade offers. Nothing happens. They stay here at 10. What, what players are you considering here? Now, there's a whole side of this fan base that is all about Bowers, like he created football. He thinks he's the next George Kittle, you know, whatever. And there's another part of fan base that thinks he's completely overhyped. Brian Baldinger did a really good breakdown of him and like how, how he, you know, he creates space, athletic ability, the one hand catches, all this stuff. What are your thoughts on Bowers at 10? Is that something that's feasible for you? Or are you like, he's considered, but you'd rather go a different direction? I would rather go a different direction, but I wouldn't be angry. Like, what are we doing? We just screwed this up. Not, not in the least. Bowers, in my opinion, is better than the boat than Conklin and Rucker. Bowers, I think, would give the Jets a you know dimension over the middle of the field. He'd give them a you know an exciting playmaker. So whether it's Rodgers, whether it's Tyrod, whether it's another you know quarterback years from now, you know they're going to have a threat, a receiving threat at the tight end position, but. You know, for me, I'm just I'm not content with the offensive line, you know, so for that reason, like I, I'm still going to I'm going to continue investing. Look, if Tyron Smith was 27 and we signed him to a four year deal. Yeah, I'm not taking left tackle, not okay. doing it. Right. If if Joe Douglas never let Morgan Moses just hit the open market and we had him under contract for another three years and he was 30, right, whatever it is, I'm not taking tackle. But because we have two guys that dealt with injuries in the case of Tyron Smith dealt with a ton of injuries. And even if they're both 100% healthy and they play all every snap of every game, yeah. they're both on one year deals. Yep. And chances are, if they both are out there healthy, they look good and they're playing every single snap of every single game. They're going to command a lot of money. They're not going to, you know, hit the market next year and be like one year, three mil. Yep. It'll be like, no, like I, I just dominated all season. Yep. So, for that reason, man, I, I think if I was here, number one, uh, I think what's most ideal for me is a trade down. Okay. Um. Now that I'm looking at it too, I mean, I I also think like I wouldn't rule out Buffalo trading up for a receiver too. With their, I think they have to at this point, right? I mean, I honestly don't think Diggs. Like, I guess that yeah, that's a whole other. Uh, New story, like a whole whole another storyline that we didn't talk about was the Stefan Diggs thing. Yep. Um, and I actually didn't catch up on your videos. I've been you know so busy over these You're last not missing much. <laughs> um, so I don't I don't know how you feel about that, but well, we'll, we'll go into it real quick. I mean, I, I think it's a it's an enormous story because it takes it just it takes away one of their strengths. 
But, you know, because I think Diggs is a great player. I know he became a pain in the ass towards the end, but that's a guy they relied on for a lot of things. You're taking away depth, which kind of brings the AFC East a little bit closer. I still have a lot of respect mm-hmm. for Josh Allen. But I also think that when you when you get rid of a guy like Diggs, you make a power move in the draft to kind of recoup that star power on offense. So I completely agree with you. They're picking at what? Where are they at? They're at, what, 28? 28, 20, yeah, 28, I think, right? 28, some, some sort of late 20. Yeah, pick. so – but, I mean, how far are they willing to go up in a, in a deep wide receiver class? Because your boy's still out there, the guy you love a lot. He's still out there. Could he fall yeah. more? You know, but that's that's a huge – it's huge for the AFC East. But I think Buffalo is going to make a statement and do something big to kind of, you know, kind of recoup, you know, that – their their the prowess on offense. But here, here at 10, I mean, so you're saying Fashanu? Or is that – I mean, would you consider Brian Thomas or no? I would, yeah, I would consider everybody, you know, like I said, like if you had to do it right now, this was if you're if you're Joe Douglas sitting here right now with the way this board just fell out, you're going offensive line, right? Yep. Fashano your guy, but I guess the second best left tackle in the draft. Yep. Yep. That's that's kind of my mindset. I mean, I just have m- maybe more faith in the right tackle position in the short and long term than I do in left tackle. Yeah, I, I don't know. Kind of it well. First off, I don't know if you saw this. I don't really feel it's tough. So there was a storyline that came out. I, I forget who it was by, um, suggesting that, or I think it actually came from Tyron Smith. I could be dead wrong. I'm gonna have to do some research on it. But basically, it was that no other team in football had interest in Tyron Smith outside of Dallas and the Jets. And as far as you know, the Jets signing him, it was it kind of came out of the you know came out of the blue. Like oh, the Jets they had their offer, but they didn't think they were going to get him. They weren't really like pushing for it to get done. And then it was just like, hey, you know, Tyron Smith is signing with us. Cool. Um, hmm. do, do you put any stock into that or no? That's interesting. Maybe it was. That's interesting. That's kind of worrisome to be honest with you, because it's like if his 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 contract isn't enormous, it's not a cap buster by no means. So is it because of his declining age. I know there's a lot of reports of how his practice schedule in Dallas was tapered down tremendously during the season where he didn't practice a lot, but he also had familiarity with the offense. So it wasn't like he had to learn anything new. He was probably a comfortable veteran, but like I know the plays. I got it. Don't worry about it. Um, that's interesting though. That's, I mean, to me, the, the offensive line is a concern like that. Tyron Smith, you get what's realistic for him. 13 good games you're hoping for, right? Like 13, maybe 14. Like that's what you're right. Yeah. But yeah. I mean that, that like, Think about the AFC though: Chiefs, Bengals, Ravens, Browns, Steelers, yeah. Bills, Dolphins, Houston, Jaguars, Colts, yeah. Chargers, Chiefs, Broncos, Raiders. Like, there's a lot. Like, if we lose four games, three games, and a lot of that is just because of Tyron Smith yeah. missing time, or you know that that's a part in us losing games. It's it's too big of a margin, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, um, so for me, I think I, yeah, I think fashion is the he's the pick. Um, you know, I think another thing too, it's like people, I guess maybe the one knock, one or two knocks on, on Olu is, you know, maybe he needs some time on the bench. Yep. Maybe he shouldn't be thrown in like right away. Maybe he should come in halfway through the year or, you know, uh, you know, uh, take a year to get stronger practice in the running game and whatnot, and then take over full in year two. And then that's when you just let them loose. Yep. That's like the, that's the situation. Yeah. That's the exact situation that the jets have, you know, in their locker room, yeah. right. Where you have that one year stop gap, older star left tackle, former all pro. I mean, there's a lot of knowledge that Tyron Smith can pass exactly. to fashion exactly. as well. So I, I feel like, man, for me, and also, too, man, like going back to 2022, if Olu declared, he would have been a top 10 pick. Yeah. Like he had a great 2022. And uh, I remember when he decided to go back to school, th- there was like this, well, Penn State uh, fans like rejoice and they're like, oh my God, awesome. Like we got, yeah. we got him back. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think Olu, he, he would be the pick for me. Yeah, you know what's funny is you kind of convinced me because I was all hell bent. I'm like, I want a receiver no matter what. I want playmakers. Obviously, my preference is to trade back, but the, it just makes a lot of sense because now this story about Tyron Smith that you mentioned kind of has me like, oh man, like we definitely want that legitimate backup. Like if he's not forced to play week one and he can learn from like even Morgan Moses is a great asset, a great mentor as well to learn from. But and the one thing I like too is I kind of want a left tackle that's played left tackle. 
You know, when you, a lot of these guys, well, they play right, they can learn left. I kind of want you already playing left tackle. That's kind of my, you know, like that's kind of where I'm always at because that's always a project. And with the Jets, I'm concerned about their coaching, the offensive line coach, a hack it. So that kind of works for me as well. Interesting pick. I was, I thought for sure you can try to sneak in Brian Thomas there. I was waiting for this. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Look, I, you know, I understand it. It's, it's a lot higher than what, you know, a lot of people or whatever, like everybody has him mocked right now, but mm -hmm. that's, it's just one of my personal, you know, favorite players in the draft. So not saying I'm right. That's just kind of my opinion on it. So now assuming the say the jets, this is what happens. They get the offensive lineman at 10. They don't have a second round pick, which blows. That kind of bothers me a lot. If you're Joe Douglas, do you try to trade them to the second round? Probably Ooh. not. No, really. I, you stay. You stand pat. I think so because it's like, like we're gonna have to give either way. We're gonna have to give up more more picks. I, I mean, unless a team is just like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll give you a second round pick Be, because here, like, here's the deal: the Jets can move up into the second round. But the team trading back has to be okay with saying, okay, we're going to move back from whatever uh, pick 48 or pick 51 all the way down to 74 yeah, or wherever the Jets are at. It's not like, all right, we're going to move down 20 or like 15, 20 spots. We're going to have to shoot all the way down around three. Um, and it's not just th – that's just the starter. That's yeah. like just what opens up the door. Because why would a team? No, no team was going to move from round two to round yeah. three. Nothing. So we're going to have to include more. Yeah. Then you factor in the Reddick trade. We already don't have a mid round pick in twenty six. I think I would just hang on to it. You know, if if there's like a top safety there, I, I think. It, you know, Ashton Davis doesn't get brought back in the weeks leading up to the draft. That I think I would probably consider safety, like that third guy. Um, but then or, what do you? But you know, what do you? So. But then what do you do if, if, say, now we took offensive lineman pick 10? Are you comfortable going into this year with Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams coming off an injury, not sure when he's coming back, Alan Lazard, Brown, Lee Gibson, and then saying we're going to add a third-round pick potentially as a wide receiver and handling wide receiver that way? Are you comfortable with that, or are you kind of concerned? No, but, I mean, there's still – you know, guys out there. Like, Tyler Boyd is still a free agent. It's wild. I, I don't get you know? that one. Yeah. Um. You know, so you got Tyler Boyd, obviously. I mean, nobody really is saying he's all that great, but like Valdez Scantling, you know, he's so oh. like, <laughs> dude, don't do that to me, man. Come on. If we have if we have Valdez Scantling and Lazard, we're gonna be we're gonna be pulling, we'll be out of our minds, we'll be dropping passes all over the place. Yeah, but I mean, it's a, it's a great point. I I just feel like everything starts though from the offensive line. I, I mean, the plan last year was Garrett Wilson and and Lazard. Yeah, you know now it's Wilson, Williams, and Lazard. I mean, if if the Jets felt comfortable with it last year and their thought process was okay, you know Rogers uh, makes receivers better. I mean, okay, like that that's great. But now this year we're a, at least a little bit better at wide receiver, and we're going to be a lot better on the offensive line. So yeah, and you, if we take Bowers at 10, you know, that's also another weapon. So and also you figure if Mike Williams is on a one-year deal too, so next year you could be without receiver again, too. So you can be in the same spot we're in this year where you have Garrett Wilson and who? Hopefully, if you have a third round pick, maybe he flourishes. But that's that's interesting. Now, a good draft question for you is is Zach Wilson traded before the draft or after? After, for sure. After so even, no, yeah, if we could even move him. He's got no value at all. Like he's not. I, I would be. It's going to be after the draft because like nobody wants to give compensation this year for him and pay him what five million bucks. Nobody wants to do that. No, I, I mean that. That's the thing. It's just like. But what's interesting is like you take a look at some rosters in the NFL. Like the Broncos' quarterback is is Jared Stidham. Yeah, that's it. You know the Raiders have Minshew and O'Connell. Like yeah. there's some quarterback rooms that are just you know not looking super super. Deep. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, you, you got to kind of think that, but then again, I guess you can maybe push back and say, well, Ryan Tannehill is still a free agent. So he's probably going to be the first one to go. So yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd be like, I'll keep saying, I'd be shocked if he's on a team come like training camp. I'd be shocked if he's still here. I don't know how they do it. I know they don't want to cut him out. Right. But they're going to try to, you know, they're probably mixing some draft picks, swap draft picks, do all kinds of fancy stuff, but I doubt he's here. Yeah. I mean, I would rather just release Wilson than, do that weird like Brock Osweiler thing where they're like attaching a pick because that just makes zero sense. 
You know how the Jets work, though. They don't want that'd be like the biggest egg on their face. They have to release him, number two pick overall, and they had to release him. They'd be like, you know, they they hate they're always about perception, man. They'll never do that. I mean, they could, but they they would probably avoid it, try to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, but it's just the reality, you know what I mean? <laughs> what a time. I mean, we covered a lot here, man. This is our first, this is our first mock draft. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, I I I think uh I think it'll be fun if like maybe next week or the week after or whatever, if we pull up the mock draft machine and we kind of go through it, you know, pick by pick and kind of just break it all down. I'm but down. uh yeah, dude, it, it was a blast. It's been too long, man. I now I'm getting like my jets. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. The Reddick move got me a little fired up. I'm like, you know what? Like I, I was I'm not I was trying to get sucked in by this team again. I'm like, I'm not gonna get sucked in, I'm not gonna get sucked in. And here we are. Like now, I'm like, all right, I'm like this <laughs> defense Bowl. gonna be legit yeah. in the right. Feel the Aaron Rodgers stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, it's gonna start buying it again. It's like we're it's inevitable. Yep, I feel you. I feel you. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.